So about three weeks ago, I was hard at work in my shop and I got a text from my friend. He said, hey man, looking for a new project? I've got something in mind. I responded with, of course, what are you thinking? He sent me a few pictures of this rustic coffee bar slash mini fridge table that he found on Etsy, made by Tyler over at Rawlings Woodworks. So I drafted up a design which was 100% inspired by Tyler's work. I'll leave links to his Instagram and Etsy page in the video description down below. Once I got the official sign off on the design, I headed out to the store to pick up some materials. So while I bring in the lumber from my car and rough cut some 2x4s to length, I'm going to throw out a quick disclaimer about this project. Now, this is a beginner project. It was made entirely from 5 2x4s, 2 2x6s, and a few scraps of 3 quarter inch plywood. However, throughout the video, you'll see me using tools that I quote unquote beginner woodworker may not typically own, like a jointer and a planer. If you have a circular saw, a drill, and a pocket hole jig, you could easily make the same exact table. I just wanted to remove all of the rounded edges and all my boards, but leaving them is definitely an option as well. So this next step is completely unnecessary. You could start assembly right now if you wanted to, but I'm gonna take all of these pieces over to my joiner, my planer, and then my table saw just to bring them down in dimension a little bit and just make sure that everything is nice and square. Also, I have a few pieces that are one and a half by one and a half, and if you don't have a table saw, you could easily just purchase two by twos at the store as well. So let's go ahead and get all of these pieces down to their exact dimensions for me. The first step in this milling process was to run all of the faces through the jointer. Once we got a flat face, we'll take that and we'll put it right up against the fence and run one of the edges through the jointer as well. If your fence is properly aligned and 90 degrees to the table, you should be left with a face and an edge on your board that is 90 degrees as well. Next, with the freshly jointed face facing down, I sent all of my pieces through the planer. The purpose of this step is one, to bring all the pieces down to the same thickness, and two, to make sure that the opposite faces are parallel to each other. After that, I brought everything over to the table saw, lined up the freshly jointed edge against my fence, and took off just enough material to remove the rounded edge. And then I flipped the board over and cut it down to its final width of three inches for the legs and one and a half inches for the stretchers. And finally, the last step was to cut all the board to their final length. I used a combination of my miter saw and my table saw with the crosscut sled, using a stop block for each to make sure that all of the pieces were cut at exactly the same length. I gave all the pieces a quick sand and then it was on to drilling some pocket holes. Now, this will make sense in a second, but there are six total legs on this table. The front leg and the corresponding back leg are connected by some side stretchers. The left front and back leg have two side stretchers, one up at the top and another set an inch and a half from the bottom. The middle and right front and back legs are held together by three stretchers, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one in the middle, which will eventually hold a shelf. Now, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, well, all the side stretchers need pocket holes, as well as the other two by two pieces that will eventually connect all of the legs together. I used glue on each joint, clamped it in place, and drove in two inch pocket hole screws. Now, if you're leaving the two by fours as is, you'll need to use two and a half inch screws instead. So I'm going to be assembling this thing upside down on my workbench, and the reason I'm not doing it on the floor is that the floor of my garage isn't level and I don't trust it. So the only downside is that when I'm installing this upside down to get the pocket holes that will be on the top structures, I need to make it so they're facing up. So if the piece is right side up, you can actually look under it and you'll be able to see these pocket holes. However, I'm going to plug them up and I'm gonna ultimately paint this white at the end so you'll never be able to tell. Next, I repeated the same process as before and attached the leg assemblies together with the two by two pieces. With the base all assembled, the next step was to add the decorative X's on the side. I was a little nervous about this step, but ultimately found a process that worked. Basically, I took the piece that I was going to use for the X and then clamped it down in the position that I wanted with some overhang on each corner. Then I made two marks on the other side. These marks gave me the exact location of where to make the angled cut at the miter saw. 
I snuck up on these cuts to make sure that the angle and the fit was good. Now for the other half of the X, I cut out two separate pieces. They do need to be two separate pieces, but I would recommend keeping it together as one and then making the marks like I did on the first one and then cut them out a few times on the miter saw. And the reason why you want to keep it as one is because it'll give you the correct alignment to position them from corner to corner. Because right now I have to find a creative way to make sure that they're not like this or like this and it's straight all the way down. And I repeated the same process for the other half of the X, but this time I used a clamp in the middle to secure the two pieces together so they were nice and straight. I used some glue and my brad nailer to secure the pieces. And if you don't own a brad nailer, you could definitely use pocket holes here as well, which I've done in the past. You'll just need to come back later and plug up the holes since they'll be visible. And now we're on to making the two plywood shelf pieces. Luckily for me, the base assembly was nice and square, so this process went pretty smoothly. First, I started off by measuring the openings for the shelves and then cut the plywood down to size. After testing the fit, I drilled out a few pocket holes on the bottom side of the shelf, tapped it in place with a rubber hammer, and clamped down a support piece so the shelf would sit flush against the top side while I secured it in place with pocket screws. So everything is pretty much done for the assembly of the base. All that I need to do next is come back and plug the pocket holes and then add some wood filler. I'm gonna do that actually when I'm done with the top. And speaking of the top, let's work on that now. So the top was made from two eight foot long two by sixes. I started off by bringing them over to the miter saw to cut them in half. I'm gonna go through the same process as before to flatten the boards and bring them down to an even thickness by using the jointer and the planer. Again, no need to take this step if you don't have these tools. After that, I brought them over to the table saw to remove the rounded edges. So in order to remove some of the gaps before glue up, I'm gonna try this technique that I picked up recently. Align the top to how you want it and then mark an I for in next to one edge and an O for out on the edge of the board that it's touching. When you send these edges through the jointer, you'll want the I facing the fence and the O facing you. That way, if the fence isn't in exact 90 degrees, it'll cancel out any errors. So I think it's worth calling out any mistakes or when things don't go according to plan, especially in these woodworking videos, because if you decide to make something like this for yourself and you run into the same issue, you feel like you're not alone. The issue that I ran into is when I took all the boards over to the jointer and ran the edges through to minimize that gap using the in-out method. Now that technique should have worked, but I found out that my jointer wasn't in alignment. So after a few hours of adjustments, I think I have it perfectly square. And when I was testing everything out, I actually removed too much material. So I had to scrap those boards. I got two new two by sixes and repeated all the same process just to get them down to the thickness that I needed. So I'm gonna take those over to the jointer and let's hope this time it works. There were some minor improvements, but overall there were still some small gaps. I'm gonna chalk this one up to having a jointer that's too small to handle the material that I was sending through. I decided that progress over perfection was best here and moved on to the glue up. I used my biscuit jointer here to help with alignment. I've made some tabletops in the past using pocket screws, so that's definitely an option as well if you don't have a biscuit jointer. Once all the slots were cut, I added some glue, dropped in the biscuits, and clamped everything up. And while the glue was drying on the top, I went back to the base and added some wood filler to any visible gaps and plugged a few pocket holes as well. When the top was dry, I removed the clamps and used a chisel to clean up some of the dried glue from the seams. After that, I used my circular saw and a straight edge guide to cut the board to length and then I used my table saw to bring it down to its final width. And lastly, I used a router with a roundover bit to soften up the edges on the top. 
And now on to finishing. After sanding, I applied some pre-stained conditioner to prevent blotching and used a dark walnut stain on the top. I initially was going to use a clear satin wipe on poly for the top coat, but I wasn't liking it. I ended up spraying a few coats of an oil-based polyurethane to the top, which I unfortunately don't have footage of. Next, I sprayed the base with some primer followed up with some white paint. All right, two more steps and we're done. I decided to use these Z clips from Rockler to attach the tabletop to the base. I cut some slots with my biscuit joiner, inserted the clips and screwed it down. If you don't have a biscuit joiner, you just need to make these slots with the table saw before assembly, or you can use these figure eight fasteners instead. Lastly, I added these little felt levelers on the bottom of each leg. With that, we can call this project complete. I loaded up the table in the back of my car and delivered it to my friend's house.